Oh, wow. So great. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hey. Oh, wow. This is, uh... Amazing manga I just read. You never have to read it. <laughs> this is Saki Nakata stuff. Funny Lentu Anime 2024 here, aka John Pullman name. John Pullman manga writer name and real name Gabe. But I was acting when I was pretending to be joyful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go close my door right quick. And we'll get into this review. Just give me a minute. I'll be sitting in this chair the whole entire time. You won't even see me that I went. Or maybe you will. It doesn't matter. So this... I remember I made a... Um, I remember I made a community post... About me doing a review whenever I would finish. Um, what's this called? Forbidden Desires. This is a work of fiction, obviously, by Iwasaki Yuki. And he presents Fewer Discretion Advised to Forbidden Desires. And he doesn't get into it until the very, very middle of the story this manga only took me uh, and i can't i can't show you the cover of it either way when you take the cover off of the manga it's the same thing just in blue acting like you're censoring it you can't let me get into the rules of this review before i go ahead and just say hey 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 the rules of this manga review is censored for many reasons Number one, it was published by F-A-K-K-U Faku Books, as they call it. Same people who, um, I don't want to say published, it was released by Faku Books, as I'm going to call it. Sorry, I don't know how to say it right. It's the same people who released Metamorphosis. Um, many other things, like the Pink Album, I actually own the Pink Album and Metamorphosis 1, again, if you have not seen Metamorphosis 2, go ahead and watch that before the tier list and the AMV. Um, yeah, I'll be doing a review on things I watch, such as, like, my first review thing I think was, um, what's that anime called, um, Redo of Healer, I had to do a censored, um, Review of that. Uh, so, I mean, let's get straight into it. I guess I'll go ahead and do a review of Metamorphosis if you want. I mean, all of you basically know the whole story, but my opinion and thoughts on it. I originally was going to do a review on it. But, not right now. Maybe I'll do one Pink Album, Killing Bites, etc. Have so many things. Um... Yeah, let's get into it. So, number one, I can't talk about what's in this manga, except for the scary things. Number two, I can't show the cover as it's currently sitting behind me. And number three, we're going to start with number three. Because Only Forbidden Desires was in um, my state of buying things. I couldn't find the first one. I know what the first cover looks like, but... It's not until I realized that these were very short... What was that? These were very, very short, separate stories. Okay? We got that? Good. And... It was just so profound. I, I, I don't regret reading this manga, but at the same time, I do. This manga is very disturbing, and from the cover and on the back, I could tell that it was a horror story. I did not know that they were separate stories, and I... I don't know. Just, 
all the stories combined are scary. Like, in a flash, they go to the X scene of things. I'm gonna talk about the one I posted on my, um, community page. And if I knew this manga was gonna be that hardcore and non-stop, then I would have never said I'd make an AMV. So for people who want an AMV of Forbidden Desires, I, I can't do it. There's just too much graphic scenes in this one. And I'm honestly going to say, Metamorphosis actually holds off on those things. And story-wise, it's a great story for like all of them. But Metamorphosis is honestly not as disturbing as this one. Let's talk about the, um, runaway chapter. We have our main protagonist who ran away from her father. Um, it doesn't explain why, because it's a short horror story. It's a collection of horror stories, there you go. Anyway, she ran away from her father to a haunted shrine that is like, oh yeah, we're not going to tell you until later. And not only that, but... The, the publisher, the author of this manga, he says, like, at the end of, like, the first segment of the entire manga, there's a separate page that says, viewer discretion advised too, and then you flip it over, it says forbidden desires. So, this is basically the forbidden desires, um, story arc of short stories. Anyways, the runaway continuing... We have our main character who we don't know the name of, because that's just how this manga rolls. Then we have her running away from her dad. Her dad calls her, and she doesn't pick up because they got in a fight, apparently. This is what happens in the manga. I am not saying this from perspective. I'm not. But, um... Yeah, she sleeps in the haunted shrine overnight, and she picks up her phone, and she hears that it's, like, raining outside, and she picks up her phone and says, battery's dead, then she hears knocking, and then my community post that I posted, literally not even two seconds later, they appear out of nowhere. The monsters coming down are horrifying. Blood coming from their eyes, because they have no eyes. And just stuff like that. It's all horrifying. Very well drawn. I will say well drawn for that. It was really good. But needless to say the stories were so graphic that they actually were scary. I've never read something this scary since It. And that's saying a lot. What these monsters want from our main protagonist to... Oh, by the way. All protagonists, except for the ones who live through certain events, they all die. They all die in each story. Why? Why do you kill them off? I don't get it. Uh. Anyways, when the monsters come down, they're saying weird words like, Sorry, sorry, I want more, or whatever. And then they continue to say sorry again. And as the main character is getting you-know-what, they're, like, saying the word sacrifice over and over. And what, what this author does so well is that with his ghost chapters, because these entities are, like, ghosts or whatever, it's really weird to explain, it's very hard to explain. You can see her being picked up on one picture, saying that she wants to go home and she's calling out for her dad, but... She's so worn down that she can't. And she gets pulled up into the roof and the wall as a sacrifice, and she dies. And then the next thing we know is that these officers and her dad comes to the shrine, and her dad sees the phone and is like, Oh no, this is my daughter's phone! But on the next page, it literally says that, Dad, I want to come home. Except they don't hear her because she's a part of the shrine now. Very disturbing indeed. 
I don't want to talk about too much of this manga, but my review on this whole thing is like... Sends shivers down my spine. The way it was drawn, the way the stories were told, just everything from the characters, the way the story was told from it being drawn, the gore, the unsettling feeling. I read the um, note of what the author said. He says... Thank you for picking this up, such and such, and that it's a horror-themed manga. No, duh, I could tell from the beginning. Um, what's another one I want to talk about that I can't say much about? Because we know the whole theme is you-know-what about, but it's scary as, well, you know, it's terrifying. What happens in, like, a continuation of a chapter that was actually connected in this one, this is the only one that's connected... I think this is the spirit photograph one. You have this main female protagonist who uh, is, like, working on ghost stories in her office. And she's talking to her friend. And after she's, like, done talking to her friend or so, she hang. And yet again, we don't know the name of this protagonist. So, we're gonna... Just say protagonist through the whole thing. The um, protagonist hangs up the phone from her friend. And she goes and looks at a picture of what they were talking about on the phone. Um, it was something about slaves or whatever. And I was like, what? And then I saw it. The ghost slaves and the master were just... Ugh. It was terrifying to look at. It was terrifying to read. And, yeah. The next thing you know, the same thing of the theme happens. You know what I'm talking about. But, it just happens so much that it says to be continued because she was nowhere to be found in her office the next day. Then after you're done reading, like, the... A few chapters or so into another story after the runaway one. You have three pages of the continuation from the photograph spirit one. And you can see what's happening to the main protagonist. She doesn't die, but she gets taken to a shrine of some sort, which is really weird. Why is this manga based on shrines? I don't get it. And just stuff like that. It's... Ugh, God... This is one that I'm probably going to read in the future again to remind myself that I like horror things, but not the things that were in it. I don't know. I can't say much about this manga. I can't talk about any more chapters of this. My reviews on the horrifying stories are a 10 out of 10. My reviews on the theme are like a 7 out of 10. And, yeah. It was very disturbing. Forbidden Desires, viewer discretion advised to Forbidden Desires was, yet again, made by Iwasaki Yuki. He also made the first one, which you can't read in my state, of, um, apparently. But that's okay, because now I know they're a collection of separate stories. It's really... That was cool for the collection of short stories. What wasn't cool was the theme. But, yeah... You can pick this up for yourself if you want to. I highly do not advise it as I am scarred from this manga. I read this so you all didn't have to. And if you have, I'm terribly sorry about that. I am. I feel your pain. And I'm sorry, I, I can't. I can't make an AMV of Forbidden Desires. I can't. But yeah, that's that's just going to do it for Forbidden Desires. That's it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to. But if you want to be scared beyond the word hell, then that's fine. That's how far this manga goes. There's all kinds of disgusting things inside of this one. Blood, gore, the main theme of the character stories, etc. And it was only like the male protagonists living. The girl ones are just... 
No. All right, that's that's about gonna do it. I, I I don't want to talk about this manga anymore. I don't want to. Am I gonna get rid of this manga? No. I spent a lot of money on it, so I'm gonna keep it. Am I gonna read it down the road eventually again? Maybe if I forget, unless I watch this video. But that's about it. Forbidden Desires has a total of, I want to say eight chapters, but they're like really short and really long pages. Yeah, that's that's about gonna do it. All right, this has been Saki Nakaido's Stuff of Funny Lend to Anime 2024 here. Um, if you did not see my live stream the other night, I finished up Persona 3 Reload, got the ending, and if I'd known that the good ending was gonna show up, then I would have kept going, but I didn't. Anyways, it also has the fight of Nyx in it, which was really cool. The whole fight, the whole thing. Anyways... I'll see all you in the next video, everybody. Stay safe out there. Peace out. Bye-bye. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, a comment, subscribe if you're new, as I'm going for a really high subscriber goal. And yeah, I'll see all you later. Peace out, everybody. Bye-bye. Next review is probably going to be Metamorphosis, or the anime of Perfect Blue, or Killing Bites. I'll see all of you in the next one. And content in general. Peace out. Bye.